YouTube, what it do is your friendly neighborhood play a partnership to hustle, and we gonna react to your boy Brian Hooks from Three Strikes, one of my favorite movies. It's a hood classic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he said that uh, Three Strikes came with fake love, which I mean that's understandable. Anytime you in the industry, you know what I'm saying, and you you doing movies and shit, it's gonna come with fake love. They love you when you're up, they hate you when you're down. It's just what it is. Hey, if you ain't done so, hit the red button, hit the like. Even if you don't like the video, hit the like, unlike. I hope you hit the like, though. Put me in that rotation. Drop a comment. If you like it or you didn't like it, let's talk. We family. Let's get to it. Uh, we about to see what bro talking about. I ain't seen him in forever, bro. I have not seen this nigga in ages. He ain't been in no movies I done seen. He might have been on, and I ain't trying to, like, this ain't no disrespect. This ain't no shot, but it's just, like, he might have been on, like, more lower-budget movies or something like that, but I ain't seen him in on main line. Even Three Strikes... It's a hood classic, but it's not like no blockbuster special, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? But uh, I ain't seen him in nothing. I'm wondering if the industry blackballed him or something like that. Because this nigga was funny, bro. <laughs> he played on uh, Soul Plane, too. Like, he got some good-ass cameos in these movies, and he do his thing. But nonetheless, we about to get to it, see what he talking about. Let's go. Drinking problem. A-list stars and they got a drug problem. A-list stars and they kill themselves. With that, was that the mind state? Were you in that mind state when three strikes came? When three strikes came? What um, mind state were you in? When three strikes came, I think I was still, still pretty young and dumb. You know what I mean? I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that I was completely there. And I was still in that space to where I was just enjoying it. like. I think a lot of people, again, this was something that I was doing outside of school and, you know, and I just feel next to next, I'm gonna have to go pick up them classes again. So you doing three but, strikes? But, doing no, okay. but I was always under the mindset, well, you know, it, you know, it's probably next month I'm gonna have to go and sign up for class again because, um, you know, it, but with other people, there was no, it was just either this or I'm gonna kill somebody, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit crazy. Like, I, I, I ain't heard nobody just talk about it like this, but, like, this is a classic, bro. It's one of my favorite movies, bro. The shit funny. Me and my niggas, bro, and my nigga Foster, my nigga Backus. We, 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 like, we quote this movie all the time. All of the hood classics, but, it, like, you sit here and think about it, bro, now being grown. Like, you look at this shit when you look, like, oh, we about to go see Three Strikes. And... Bro, they got Stacy in there, face on love, Mike Epps, you know what I'm saying? E40. Cause. <laughs> this nigga E40 shit. Hey, now if you take these marbles, hey, nah, nah, I ain't even fucking with that shit. Nah, it's on the house. We legit now. You know what I'm saying? He got all that Bay Area slang, bro. This shit's so funny, bro. That's my shit. Because I love California vibes, but when you look back at it, bro, you're not thinking that these people are just regular people because it's like, it's not a blockbuster movie. It's it's some shit to where they trying to make it out the hood. They trying to get you know get their fame, get on the movies. Get it's, it's a it's a movie to put them in, you know. Especially if you ain't seen them before, put them in other avenues, and other other venues and stuff like that. But to hear that he was feminist movie while he was picking up classes is crazy. Like he in college, bro. Like it was this. I'm filming this shit while I'm in school, and then this shit is a classic, bro. It's a hood classic, bro. Like, bro, this is that's legendary, bro. Like, straight up. And for me, it was like, yo, this is great, but I, I never, there was never an ego attached to what I was doing. I was just, I felt blessed to be able to be doing this with these people who I think is cool and look up to. And I think a lot of other actors, you know. They, you know, they, they put their ego on the road first. It was like, going on there, check out the space. Right. I'll be in there in five minutes. And so it's, it's a different type of energy that you have when you're trying to achieve. But, but for me, I was, I was, I'm from Bakersfield, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just, I was happy to be here. Like, I was like, man, we're on the set. I'm making a movie. This is dope. You know what I'm saying? And, and that was the extent of it. And I hope that it came out and it was amazing. Um, but if it didn't, I don't know. I tried to do another one. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, you're coming to have fun. 
from Bakersfield, California. Hey, hey, what a place, bro. Like, if you ever been to Bakersfield, you know it's low key dusty. But, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think people do get beside themselves, bro, when they feel like they got a little, like, cloud and they famous and, like, people, like, you know, you see that in school, bro. Like, even outside of famous niggas, you see that. You see that when you in college and you got people in certain organizations or like football players or basketball players or what have you people held to this it's a hierarchy in your 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 respective community which is like whether it's, it's, it's high school college or what have you it's like people treat them like celebrities bro and some people like either step to it or they don't like some people either step to it or they kind of like you know i feel like uh they like what I've learned, bro. Like being in a fraternity, and then you know, motherfuckers like thinking you popular and shit, and they they you know they hold you to another standard. Like f- like notoriety, bro, and popularity bring out your worst traits, bro. Like or or if it don't bring out your worst traits, it fucking whoever you were before. Most times it's going to be who you are 10 times after you get get to that stage, get to that popularity part. You're going to either be a super asshole, you're going to be super conceited, or you're going to be a great person. You're going to be genuine, you're going to be authentic. And I think that uh, a lot of people that get in these positions, they before they was that, it's in it, before they was who they were, they was lame. They was lame. And they was some fucking nerds. And I don't mean nerds like fucking geeks or no shit like that. I'm saying nerds, for lack of a better term, geeks. Like, I ain't no shame, but, like, fucking nerds. You know what a nerd is. A nerd is just a go- a, a lame-ass nigga, bro, like, lame. And I don't mean lame like, oh, don't have no friends. I'm talking about you do lame shit. And, f- and you know what I mean. If you know, you know. Like, fucking nerds, bro. Like, you go out here and you just, like, treat people bad, like, I feel like niggas didn't really have like you never knew what it was like to be friends with people and then you get here and you get in these stages and you you are held to a standard and then you treat people bad and you think shit is beneath you because like it's like and I've never been famous but it's just like just from hearing people like that talk it's like people get these type of uh getting these rooms and they want to be human because you are human, but you alienate yourself by treating people different and, and like, oh, I'm not, like he just said, I'm not going there. You going there and I'll come later. Like, nigga, we all here to work, bro. Yeah, you might be an A-list star and I might be a D-list, B-list, C-list, whatever the case, but my nigga, be normal. That's what makes people want to fuck with you. That's what made people want to follow you because you being yourself, you being authentic, bro. Like when I started my channel, I was I don't do I, I I was being myself. I'm still being myself now. And you either fuck with it or you don't. But I think that's what fucks people up, bro. They get in these rooms, they get famous, and they start to fucking not be themselves. They start to just fucking drink the Kool-Aid, nigga. And they just start fucking doing shit that is not natural to them. They start trying they start not being themselves. Or they never got to the point to where they really found out who they was and they let that shit change them because people will sit here and they will fucking, uh, people will sit here and they will put you on this pedestal and you don't know how to handle that shit. You feel me? And I think that that's where we are, bro, in society. Some people just not meant to have this type of power. We see this shit in movies all the time where you got a fucking evil villain that just comes out of nowhere and just some people just not meant to have this type of power but they're talented you know what I'm saying niggas need people coaches bro life coaches for sure let's go when you land a starring role Hollywood being such a competitive place very few opportunities when it deals with our black male talents and here's Brian having this good time and luck is on his side did you feel the jealousy or did you did you pick it up at all because i could just imagine there's somebody really like one yeah. opportunities and here you go yeah 
I, I think um, I've never really ran in those circles and been a part of those circles. So I, I can't say I felt it, felt it. But, you know, sometimes you do feel an energy, you know what I mean, about where you're at and what you're doing. And I know, it, you know, you got to understand that any role that you've gotten, there was a whole lot of all your peers was trying to get that role, too. Um, and I think it was a little um, something there ending around that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it, it always with, you know, he's not funny, he's not that talented, so on and so forth. You know, even with, you know, Kevin, they do that a lot. Like, oh, he, he's not that funny, he's that, yeah, well, it's a lot of people who showed up and they laughed really hard. I laughed, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, it, you, you can't please everybody, but a lot of that comes from a place of hatred. You know what I mean? Uh, Thousands of people's not showing up for somebody because they're not this or that, you know what I mean? They are this and that. It might not be your tea, but there's a lot of other people drinking the tea. And I understood that, man. And, um, you know, my, my spirit and my energy, like I just don't, uh, I just don't entertain that, man. And so, you know, a lot of times, <laughs> you, you know, you, you, you may want to take my head off it, go right over my head. You know what I mean? I don't know you, man. You know, so I've just been able to sort of navigate around that because, again, I never felt this necessity to be a part of the Hollywood circles. And therefore, I wasn't. I, um, I avoided a lot of that nonsense and, and BS. But you do, you know, as you get roles and things happen, you do notice you... You know, you start to get, hey, what's up, and calls from people. You're like, uh, okay, hey, you know you knew me. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> you know what I mean? So as things start picking up. Yeah. So, yeah, another thing I want to key on with that is uh, he, he's right, bro. Like, niggas be hating, bro. It's just what it is. Niggas hate. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that don't have nothing to do with you. He had, He's completely right. It has everything to do with them. You know what I mean? their lack of uh, being secure within themselves and just, you know, hating, bro. And, and that shit gonna happen, bro. It's just the balance of life, bro. Like, niggas gonna hate. It's just what it is, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's up to you to know your purpose, your divine energy, and God having this omnipotent hands wrapped upon you and knowing where you going, bro. Like, niggas is gonna, the devil is gonna find ways, and I'm not even trying to preach, but the devil is gonna find ways to get to you and break you down, and you see it today in Hollywood and in, in the music industry, bro, like niggas fall victim to this shit all the time, bro, because they let shit get to they get to them, bro, like bro, a lot of this shit be small thing to a giant, you know, when you get put in a place of uh, of like, a place where like it's been competition that niggas gonna say what they gonna say. It's just what it is. And it, you, we human, that shit hurt. But, and it's okay to feel a certain way, but, you know, knowing that, nigga, this is what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to test you. It's a process. It's not always the result of, oh, I got to move the road. It's everything that happened in between and after. Niggas gonna say that because niggas think they funnier than you. Or whatever, better than you. They play football better, base whatever that whatever it is. Nigga, it's just what it is. And I feel like, yeah, bro, he hit the the nail on the head. But where I disagree is, bro, you can't alienate yourself because, like I told you, when I first started this video, I ain't seen him in many movies because he probably wasn't paying the game and he wasn't politicking. Also, they say it's some Hollywood Hollywood stuff where they make you do shit that you know you emasculate yourself and that niggas ain't doing it. I agree you know stand on your square but and I'm not talking about play the game with that but I am saying like bro you gotta be able to touch elbows in, in, in politics you know what I'm saying whatever you whatever fits for you um, because politicking is what's gonna get you in these doors not how great you are all the time it's about how you play these games and it's, I'm not saying bend over for a nigga at all Cause I'm a nigga A nigga tell you I do not Fucking fold It's just what I don't fold like a chair At all You know what I'm saying I'm gonna stand on Whatever the fuck I view And If it's something That can help me I'ma listen But if it's some bullshit I'm not going But Sometimes you gotta Play the game You can't You can't show a nigga Your hand all the time And then let that shit Roll off your shoulder But 
I'm not saying running these bad circles, but sometimes you got to got them, like, I got a book called Spook by the Door. The Spook Who Sat by the Door. Like, bro, you got to infiltrate to to further your means sometimes. You got to blend in, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way that you're going to be able to set certain things straight. It's blending in. That's just what it is. It's the name of the game. And... Again, we're human. Sometimes it's too much. Sometimes you can't handle it. I get it. But, you know, in order to be successful, bro, you got to play the game. And I even find myself, that's why I got all these books over there. I read all the time, helping myself. I get something to help myself because I fight this battle too. Life be life and it kick a nigga ass, but you chose this. And God chose this for you, bro. Your destiny is forever evolving by your choices. You know what I'm saying? So everything ain't always about uh, what they did. Sometimes what they did may help you. It might be a self a self help journey that you don't see coming. You know what I'm saying? But you got to stay true to the course. I'm gone. And with little things, so you see, yeah, you know, people watching and. You know, I'm not a dummy, so I know, you know, it's, it's, we've, we've never been friends. You've never extended yourself to me, um, you know, so I know it's something more there, you know what I mean, for them other than what, what Some maybe people, surface. From what I could tell, they play the game mm -hmm. where you know it's fake love, mm -hmm. but you kind of entertain it. Mm -hmm. it, it. Like, I see that happen with a lot of our stars who get like, they'll blow up and then all of a sudden they're friends with these other celebrities. It's like, well, how did, did y'all <laughs> when y'all mean? y'all know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. And that's, that's just a bunch of goofiness. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and people, you know, people high five, hey, whoa, what me? And I know they don't support me. You don't support me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure you don't support me. And so, Again, like I'm so in tune with who I am and what I'm trying to do that like after that moment, like I don't, it don't even make it home, right? You know what I mean? I'm used to that, I expect that from you. And so, and, and that just goes to the, just like the goofiness of Hollywood and how fake it can be because everybody's just shucking and jucking and trying to get to the next level, right? And so I sort of judge people on how they treat and view uh, whoever they see to be the least important person in the room. Yeah, that's real, bro. Like, um, I feel like a lot of times you have to, and then when I said play the game, I meant that. That don't mean be friends with these niggas. By any means. But it's also like, bro, you gotta figure out. You gotta figure out how to deal with this person to get what you want. And I'm not saying be friends. I'm not saying he he ha ha. You know what I mean? Kissing no ass. But you gotta kind of. And it, it kind of sound like manipulation. But if you're trying to get somewhere, you gotta kind of manipulate or goddamn force your hand in a way to get them. To vouch for you because sometimes it's done happen to me in the job, bro. Like a nigga be too real. I am too real, a hundred percent across the board. But it'll bite you in the ass because the the work world, um, and just the world in general, whatever industry you in, it don't work like that. It's dog eat dog. It's a bunch of fucking friends that's got their friends on, and if they don't like you, they will blackball you. Period. So you got to figure out a way to not blackball yourself, but make it to where a nigga can't figure you out, figure out your intentions. And that's called being a gray man. You got to be a gray man in these situations, bro. Like you, you got to motherfucking blend in, smoking mirrors every day, all day, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, this shit revolves around you, my nigga. You. Not them, not them, not them. You. And, you know, you got to be able to look yourself in the mirror. You know what I mean? But you also got a family feed, a legacy to live. You know what I'm saying? And one thing that 
I've been working on for the past like four or five years is not allowing my pride ruin anything from my kid and my family and my future family. You know what I'm saying? And just playing the game, bro. Because sometimes, sometimes you got to stand on your square and be like, nigga, I ain't doing that shit. Fuck that. But 99% of the time, bro, I'm going to say 90% of the time, bro, you got to figure out how to fucking make this shit work for your family. And I do not mean by bending over. Right. And if I see you treat me different than you do that guy or that person over there, then... Mm, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not going to give you the energy to go back and forth with you about it, but you know, I, I put you in the bucket to where I just keep you in front of me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you know, I can make a choice to not be around these people. So, so to confront you or go back and forth, I'm not going to waste my energy, but it's just a very, it's just a, a, a very goofy space and it attracts like entertainment and actors. It attracts a certain type of personality that most times lacks a foundation, right? And then they have these things about themselves that they think, you know, the stardom is gonna feel and it's gonna make them feel good. But what do we see? We see them A-list stars and they got a drinking problem. A-list stars and they got a drug problem. A-list stars and they kill themselves. And you're like, whoa, what are you, you know what I mean? Because it just amplifies. Once you blow up, it's gonna amplify whoever you are. I just say that shit at the beginning of this video. And I've never seen this video before, but it, it's just real, bro. Knowing people and knowing yourself, bro. I'm a realistic nigga, bro. It's just what it is. We feel we live in a world to where, you feel me, people going to coddle you and they're going to tell you it's okay. They're going to come with all these other tactics. And sometimes it is okay. But a lot of times it's not. My nigga, you need to deal with the root problem of whatever the fuck it is you got going on and whatever your issue is. Like, one thing that I see, like, we're going to use a dog as an example, bro. Like, you know how, like, some people get dogs and they treat them like they kids. And they be like, oh, it's motherfucking cute and all this other stuff. Don't whoop it and all this other stuff and there's other ways to. That shit sound great in theory, bro. It do. But it's a motherfucking dog that derived from a fucking wolf. They motherfucking eat dog kibble. They motherfucking eat raw food organs and all this other shit that's the ideal diet they should be on straight up but if you die today and your dog ain't have nothing to eat for the next two days and they got hungry that motherfucker gonna eat you they not the same bro you know what i'm saying they got they do have compassion and shit but you just have to treat shit different bro and uh, I kind of lost my thought process on why I used that comparison, but it was a reason. Oh yeah, 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 I remember. It was the, it was that people gotta get to the root of the problem, bro. You can't be sitting here and just like landing on emotion every time. You gotta mix logic, emotion. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta think with your heart and your mind. You can't just leave with your heart sometimes, cause leaving with your heart will burn a nigga every time. You feel me? Leaving with your mind gonna burn a nigga every time. It has to be a balance. You know what I'm saying? And when you go in these situations and, bro, and you're not complete or you're not doing the work as you are in these situations and trying to better yourself and you, you're you going to get swallowed up by the beast every time because that motherfucker is 120. That motherfucker got a winning record, the beast do, and it's going to swallow you if you don't work on yourself. It's, it's people that's made it out, for sure. But you have to sit here and work on yourself, bro. You can't go in these situations and, you know, be ugly, bro, because that shit going to chew you out. We done seen it. People come out with mental health problems. Nigga, you think your problem bad when just going to a job and it being your ass. What about the world being on you? We just watched, and I'm about to digress a little bit. We just watched Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford fight. Earl Spence is one of my favorite fighters. Floyd Mayweather is one of my favorite fighters. Roy Jones Jr. But we talking about Earl Spence, right? The world was loving this nigga. As soon as he got beat by fucking Terrence Crawford, this nigga was getting clowned. We see it all the time. You could be great one day, and you could have a bad day, and the world hates you. But you gotta, you, you gotta surround yourself. First of all, 
you gotta you you gotta do the work on yourself first and not make excuses and all this other bullshit. You, you got to. My bad, y'all gotta get this focus up. You got to. And then you gotta surround yourself with people that genuinely care about you. And don't worry about what and it's hard saying this shit is easier said than done. Don't worry about what other people think about you. It's hard. Cause sometimes I do be thinking about this shit. Well, I used to. But I've done work on like, man, fuck it. Fuck this shit. That's my motherfucking motto. That and keep this motherfucker rolling by any means. I don't care what happened, keep this bitch rolling. You hear me? Uh a proper name, Curtis motherfucking snow out snow on the bluff. But that that's neither here nor there, bro. Like, fuck that shit. That shit real though. This nigga, hey, Brian Hooks, he keeping it real. I need to follow him on IG or something because he really got some game. If you insecure when you start, you're gonna be incredibly insecure once you you know you get to where you're going. If you have a little drug problem, you're gonna have a lot of drug problems. If you like to have a drink here and there, you're gonna have a drink everywhere. So it, it doesn't fix or feel anything, but they don't understand that. And then they're at the top wondering why they don't feel good. You know what I mean? And they topple over. And it was a good ass interview, man. I'm gonna have to catch some more of these. I, 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 you know. Hey, I don't know, but hey, it's your boy Chip the Hustler, man. I ain't did shit, but give y'all a little game. The world is a motherfucking ATM. All you need is some game. But look, do me a favor. Hit the red button. Hit the like. Subscribe. All the above. If you like the content, comment, bro. We a family, bro. We got a dialogue, bro. If you don't, hey, cool. This ain't for you. But if it is, hit the like. Hit the red button. Like I said, if you feel anything I said, comment, good or bad. If you just want to ask for two cents on, I will respond, bro. Or at least try to.